Well, good morning, everybody. We appreciate you being here with us. I'm Katie Earl. I'm the coordinator of our University Express program, and we're here with Dr. Phil Stevens. Welcome, Phil. Thank you. We are happy you're here, and everyone who's on, we're happy you're here, too. It looks like we've got some new folks, so I'll quickly breeze through my normal housekeeping, and feel free to tune me out if you know what I'm going to say. We are recording, and I'll try to post it on our website in the near future. You've joined muted and without your video showing, and those are just the settings for our program. It's not because you've done anything wrong, and we'll communicate with you using the Q&A panel. So if you have any questions or comments as Phil goes through his presentation, feel free to type those in when you think of them. If you're on a computer, your Q&A panel is located at the lower right-hand side of your screen. Open it or click on it, open it, you'll see the text box and send your questions to me. And the tablet or smartphone, touch your screen, that brings up your control panel. You'll see a circle with three dots, Q&A is right there. And then same for you, click on that text box and send your questions right to me. So we'll thank our sponsors, which is my Department of Senior Services, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York, Excelsior Orthopedics and Wegmans for all their support. And if you ever need anything from Senior Services or even if you're not sure what you need, give us a call. We're at 858-8526. All right, the star of our show, Phil Stevens retired in 2019 after 48 years in the anthropology department at the University of Buffalo. He received his BA in English from Yale, then went to Nigeria with the Peace Corps to teach English and to work with the Nigerian government's Department of Antiquities. Those experiences brought him into anthropology, and then he entered the graduate program at Northwestern University. He conducted dissertation research in different areas of Nigeria and conducted subsequent anthropological research in West Africa and the Caribbean. He is the author of many publications in cultural anthropology and African studies, and he is the recipient of two reward awards for excellence in teaching, and he's here with us today. Phil, thank you. The virtual floor is yours. Thank you, Katie, and before we get started, I want to express my appreciation uh, to and praise of uh, Catherine Earl, who has provided these distractions throughout the pandemic. You probably know that she has hosted two lectures every day, five days a week for, a, it's almost a year and a half now, isn't it? It's at least a year and it's been really, really great. This is the last, at least it's my last uh, Zoom uh, presentation. I look forward to seeing some of you in person. Uh, Katie's uh, fall schedule is uh, already uh, in in progress. So let's let's get started. Um, the uh, the topic uh, conspiracy theories. It's it's with us today. It's on uh, uh, everybody's uh, conversation for several months now. Um, is it important? Can we regard this as as harmless, a a distraction, a topic for for conversation when we have um, uh, don't have other important things to talk about? Uh, absolutely not. This should be regarded as very uh, disturbing. Uh, I suggest that this uh, preoccupation with conspiracy theories and the apparent acceptance of many of them without question. Uh, is uh, is a serious problem in our nation. Uh, as an anthropologist, I want to say that it suggests us a crisis in in human thinking, uh, not just American thinking, because as we'll see as we go along, this is a universal uh, uh, issue. But um, it is a it shows the abandonment of reason, the abandonment of critical thinking, the failure to ask important questions about uh, what might have otherwise been considered bizarre um, uh, ideas. C consider, for example, the belief uh, that the moon landing of the uh, July 1969 Apollo 11 moon landing was staged. A lot of people still believe that. What consider what it would take for for such a statement to be true? Um, that the that it is a hoax. What would that entail to bring off such a hoax uh, all these years later with no hint that it is a hoax? 
thousands of people, even around the world, uh, satellite trackers and uh, 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 and uh, radio people all around the world, not just in uh, in Houston uh, at Central Michigan Control, would have to be in on it, right? Um, or that the most recent, the uh, the so-called big lie, the 2020 election was was staged that Donald Trump really won but the votes were somehow changed what would it take for that to be true that Im that implies that certainly thousands not just hundreds but thousands of election workers across the whole country were in cahoots they were they were involved together and to this date none of them has talked about it none there not a single hint that that this has uh, that this network was established has come out and remember that 63 according to the the news 63 different uh, investigations were conducted and every one of them was was nullified the the results were 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 certified and those people who certified them including a number of republicans are are hoaxing us, I mean, really, what would it take for that to be true? And, you know, we we have been in, uh, subjected to such conspiracies for decades, uh, if not centuries. Um, uh, common ones that we have heard, or I have heard almost all my life, your doctor won't tell you. We have a secret to uh, to health that that uh, the big pharma, the pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know. Back in the 80s, or I think it was maybe the 70s, I first heard the story that there really is a cure for cancer, but it's been suppressed by the pharmaceutical companies who are making uh, big, big bucks. Uh, uh, the uh, cancer research uh, uh, outfits would, would lose their jobs if we knew the truth. Uh, these are the kinds of things that are have become common in our uh, in our culture. Let's uh, look at uh, some terms before we get underway. The anthropology of conspiracy theories is my title. Anthropology is the study of humankind uh, from the Greek uh, two Greek words. Um, in, anthrop in America, anthropology is a broad uh, field, including all of those sub areas. My area, as I think Katie uh, told you, is cultural anthropology, uh, which indeed um, uh, dis uh, subsumes uh, some of the some of the others. The cultural anthropology of anything includes three different levels of investigation and uh, and uh, uh, data. The uh, ethnography is the basic cultural description. That's what the anthropologist does first. Ethnology is using that ethnographic data uh, in a comparative way, uh, comparing across uh, cultures uh, and ultimately around the world in order to make general statements about people of a particular region or ultimately about humans uh, everywhere. And through that invest that cross-cultural comparative uh, investigation, we are able to make uh, assumptions about human nature. Some of the traits that we find across cultures uh, are seem to be universal. They seem to exist in all cultures. Uh, and if that is so, it suggests that there's something fundamentally human going on here. It may not be something that is learned and shared, taught to children by their parents, but rather it is inherent in us. Uh, and we are justified in looking for a possible neurological, neurobiological basis for something that we find to be universal. We may not find it. It may be that something is universal simply because it's the easiest, it's the simplest, it's the most logical way of doing something. Um, 
but it may also be universal because it is rooted in our evolutionary biology. The science of evolutionary psychology, which has been a branch of the field of psychology for some decades now, uh, looks uh, at this. The other important word in our title is conspiracy. Uh, sorry, the second important word, um, which has also three meaning meanings. Uh, conspiring is uh, plotting, um, usually in secret uh, against uh, uh, somebody else or something else. Uh, conspiracy can be the plot itself, the agreement that the conspirators have come up with, or it can refer to the group of conspiracy, conspirators, uh, the conspiracy uh, uh, against Hitler. For example, the, the people involved in plotting um, and theory. Uh, the word theory has been one of the most uh, uh, misunderstood in, uh, in the field of science and, and uh, public understanding. Um, theory is not a guess. It does not mean a guess. It, it, the word theory applies to the best available explanation. Explanations change in science as data uh, improves, but at any one point in the development of thinking about something, uh, the current uh, explanation for that thing is the current theory. We talk about medical theory, we talk about music theory, we talk about um, the theory of uh, the, the germ uh, the germ theory of disease, for example. We all know that germs cause, cause uh, disease, uh, but we can't see germs, right? And so for a long time, this was in the realm of, of, of assumption. And that's often what theories are, but they are uh, rooted in the best scientific explanation of the time. So the anthropology of conspiracy uh, theories. Um, I hope those terms are, are understood. Modern American history has been driven by conspiracy theories. Consider some big ones. Uh, the first Red Scare, uh, the fear of communism uh, uh, motivated uh, the uh, thinking in the first decade of the 20th century. Uh, fifth column thinking, the word fifth column, you might have heard of this. The, uh, um, the word comes from the Spanish uh, Civil War of the 1940s or 1930s and 40s, I guess. Um, uh, assuming that uh, a city like Madrid is, is going to be uh, attacked from four different uh, um, directions, uh, there may also be an internal uh, uh, set of allies who are ready to uh, join the, uh, the, the invasion. Um, uh, uh, spies uh, or embedded uh, people. This is the fifth uh, column. Uh, and such was the thinking in the uh, shortly after, shortly, sorry, after the inception of the Second World War, uh, Japanese Americans who had been in our country for some generations, they fought with us uh, in the uh, Second World War, but they were rounded up uh, uh, as a couple hundred thousand of them were rounded up and put into uh, concentration camps in California and Montana and, uh, and elsewhere. Uh, we could ask the question, why the Japanese? Why not German Americans? We were at war with Germany also, and probably the answer should be obvious. Uh, it has to do with, with racial uh, appearances and so forth. The second red scare was the, uh, the uh, fear of communism following the end of the Second World War uh, with the uh, closure of the so-called Iron Curtain that, that separated Russia from the West uh, and all kinds of suspicions about what was going on behind the Iron Curtain, you might remember. And in the 1950s, we had the rise of McCarthyism, which was a horrible time uh, in uh, American, uh, uh, modern American history. 
based on the assumption of a hidden uh, threat within our midst, uh, a communist plot against uh, America. Um, such theories seem to be logical and credible uh, during such times. Uh, and this is a principal reason why they catch on. There is also fear and anxiety, and there, there's a strong correlation between the existence of conspiracy theories and intensity of social anxiety. But many such theories are wildly improbable. And as I said at the very beginning, people fail to ask basic questions about them. In times of social stress, and social scientists know this, not just social psychologists, but all social scientists, especially anthropologists, uh, know that in times of social stress, uh, scapegoating and searching for other explanations or any kind of explanations at all um, leads people to, to uh, accept uh, explanations which previously would not have been credible. Um, uh, and as anxiety intensifies, uh, people's uh, clinging on to more and more wildly, uh, wild uh, conspiracy theories becomes more frequent. Some examples are uh, in modern American history are, are given here. The McMartin preschool case in California, uh, the most expensive uh, investigation in California history, $7 million it cost the state uh, to uh, search for uh, evidence of satanic cult activity at the Manhattan Beach uh, School or the McMartin preschool in Manhattan Beach, California. A bizarre case, absolutely bizarre. And the testimony in court uh, is hard to believe, but it happened uh, and it went on and on. Um, and it, it has such uh, relevance to si situations of today that the New York Times reviewed it uh, in its uh, April 11th uh, uh, issue. Remember Pizzagate, as it came to be called, the idea that a uh, a child sex trafficking ring was uh, controlled by Hillary Clinton, I, I think, was operating out of a pizza shop in Washington, D.C. Uh, and at least one armed gunman stormed that pizza shop to try to set free the, the kids who were trapped in, in the basement. The, there was no basement in that building. It, it, it was bizarre. The anti-vax um, movements uh, starting uh, several years ago, uh, reviewed by CNN in April uh, this year, the 2020 elections, which we've already mentioned, the phrase the China virus uh, um, uh, applied to uh, the uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, the uh, co COVID, uh, uh, the uh, coronavirus, um, which uh, suggested uh, a conspiracy uh, in China, in Wuhan, and this bizarre set of allegations comprising QAnon. Uh, different versions of it are different. We'll have a look at QAnon again later on. Uh, and I thought I would put in this one. Did, were you aware of this? Um, uh, this little this story in the New York Times of of uh, of May this year. Uh, the title of the story: I'll take white supremacist hand gestures for one thousand. Uh, a Jeopardy uh, 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 question. Uh, how hundreds of Jeopardy contestants talk themselves into a baseless conspiracy theory and won't be talked out of it. This is the series of pictures that they were looking at. This is a contestant on Jeopardy who was doing very well. I've forgotten his name. You, you might know. Uh, and he's holding up one, uh, meaning I've got one correct, and then two correct, then three correct. But to to followers of what they think QAnon is all about, uh, the, these, especially the third one, uh, is uh, held over the heart, is a QAnon membership uh, uh, gesture, a secret gesture uh, indicating something, that QAnon is going to do something. Um, 
this is current. Um, so we have to ask the question, why? Why do people believe such things? Uh, as all science, uh, uh, all scientific investigation boils down to at least uh, uh, two uh, fundamental uh, questions about the data under observation. The first is the question of correlation. What does this seem to correlate with? Uh, what else is going on? Um, and this is critical because uh, most of the uh, people who accept conspiracy theories without question are adopting what I have called monocausal thinking monocausal, meaning one cause, that, that uh, history uh, moves, uh, a chain of events moves like A to B to C to D, uh, like uh, pool balls on a, on a table, um, a, a linear progression. We know that history doesn't work this way. We know that society doesn't work this way. Most things that happen uh, are the product of several different uh, actions, not just one. But conspiracy, in, in any case, what do conspiracy theories correlate with? What else is going on? Uh, uh, the primary thing we uh, are aware of is times of social anxiety, uh, social collective uncertainty seem to be always present uh, when a conspiracy theory uh, Catches on, but here are the rest of the of the conditions that I have identified going on today that correlate with um, the uh, rise of and the acceptance of bizarre cons conspiracy theories. All of these other things are going on, and some of them are themselves symptomatic of social uh, uncertainty and and confusion and uh, uh, anxiety. Look at look at all of these things, which somehow either contribute or themselves are uh, symptoms of of underlying uh, anxiety. We have to consider them all really to answer that question: Why are people accepting these uh, explanations for for various social phenomena? The other uh, tool that science uses is function. Uh, as a guide to research. What function does this seem to serve? Uh, it, does it exist because it serves an important function? What is that function? Uh, and um, this is a functionalist explanation. Um, uh, like a, a correlation, there may be many and we have to investigate every one of them to see whether they any of them are directly causal. Uh, uh, a, 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 an act or a belief might serve several different functions at the same time uh, or different functions to different people or different functions uh, to the same people at different times. Uh, we have to understand them uh, and ask, could they, could they be causal? Could they be the reason uh, why this phenomenon exists. Uh, conspiracy theories d serve these functions, and these are clear. They provide explanation. It may be a bizarre explanation, but um, uh, it's within the realm of possibility, usually. And by having an explanation, uh, people are comforted. They, they have a sense of understanding and thereby a sense of control. Conspiracy theories provide a scapegoat. They provide another uh, agency to blame for problems that we are, our society is experiencing. Scapegoating is a human universal and it's found among many animals as well. Seeking someone else to blame for a problem that we are involved in. Uh, it's natural uh, and it's, uh, it's universal. Conspiracy theories provide a distraction. We've got all kinds of serious problems on our minds now. Uh, conspiracy theories allow us to get away from those problems and to redirect our thinking and our uh, anxiety, which also 
gives us at least temporary uh, comfort and, and satisfaction. Problems with functionless explanations, however, uh, is that very often the function develops after the event. Um, as many scientists say, explaining something in terms of its function may be like explaining the nose as uh, a vehicle, uh, a means of supporting glasses. Why do we have this schnoz, this thing that sticks out from our face? We don't need it for smelling. We have it because it supports glasses. Aha, uh -huh. you look at a person with glasses, if he had no nose, those glasses would be would fall down. There's the explanation and the and the most fundamental problem with functionalist explanations uh, is revealed. Uh, another function of conspiracy theories, which I want to explore, is that they unite the group of believers uh, and they are united in their opposition to some other. Social scientists uh, capitalize that word, the other, the adversary, the potential enemy, um, the, the different people out there who think differently and may be suspect because of that. Um, and we have a common belief, we are united in that common belief, and that unity is terrifically important. Uh, to be with like-minded people is very, very important, especially in times of social uncertainty, right? And if we explore this from an anthropological perspective, we find that this sentiment is also absolutely universal. All cultures, and I will repeat that, all cultures and cultures throughout uh, recorded uh, human history have beliefs in dangerous others, dangerous creatures, uh, dangerous forces that are lurking just at the fringes of, of society. Uh, I have a couple of other lectures for University Express that explore um, uh, this phenomenon, especially the ones that I give at Halloween time. Uh, you can have a look when Katie publishes the, the fall uh, schedule. Um, the, the fact that this is not only universal, but very probably rooted in our humanness is first suggested by what psychologists have called the startle response, which is detected in infants, babies who recognize their parents, they recognize people who look like their parents, and they are familiar. But if you show a baby a picture of a person who looks radically different from the baby's parents, the baby will, will react uh, in what psychology calls the startle response. And there have been all kinds of tests that suggest that the fear of something strange, something that resembles us but is awfully different, uh, and potentially dangerously different uh, is a is is fundamentally uh, human. It is universal. It serves an important function, of course, because it provokes in us uh, the uh, the uh, flight or fight uh, response to prepare for some kind of potential threat against us and against uh, our uh, our group. Um, let's look at a, uh, some cases. Uh, you might know that I have been interested in classical witchcraft, uh, uh, elements of which are absolutely universal. The witch, him or herself, is not universal, but the, the components of witch beliefs are absolutely universal. And I'm going to list those components for you because uh, most of, of them are elements of fundamental conspiratorial thinking, uh, which are, I'm going to suggest, rooted in the fact of being human. Social subversion. We suspect that the outsiders, the dangerous others, are plotting 
to undermine our way of life. Most of them are most active uh, at night. This is a fundamental human fear. We are comfortable during the day. We are, we are not nocturnal creatures. For us, the night is a time for to be inside, to be together, to be quiet, and to sleep if possible. Um, witches have the ability of transforming themselves. This also is a universal, and it's a fantasy out of world folklore. Uh, the idea that there are creatures that can cha change their forms uh, suggests to people that this is a wonderful, a miraculous trait, and world folk tales are filled with this with this trait. Children are are um, entranced by the idea of be of becoming invisible or changing into something else. It's a fundamental human fantasy. Uh, witches fly. Uh, and this is uh, also a universal fantasy. We are enchanted by the idea of birds, and we dream of flying, and folk tales are full of the ideas of flying. Uh, witches have a familiar animal or spirit, a, another being that carries part of their evil abilities with it, um, and they, they have pets just as human beings have pets. And we project a, a lot of our human emotions into our pets. And we project a lot of our human traits into our pets. We talk to our pets and we imagine that they are fully understanding what we are saying and that perhaps they can even uh, respond. Witches have a gathering, a, a, a meeting, usually at a set time of the week or the uh, uh, time of the night. Um, and it's called the Sabbath. The word comes from the, the Hebrew because the first people to be suspected of being witches uh, in Western culture were Jews. Uh, and uh, the uh, word for the Jewish holy day became the word for the meeting of the witches, the Sabbath or the Sabbath with an H. Witches, among all the terrible things witches do, they, uh, they, they spread disease, um, um, pandemic diseases, diseases with un, unknown or unclear uh, etiology uh, are, um, uh, are suspected to have some kind of supernatural uh, origin. Uh, some um, some kind of uh, uh, sorcery or witchcraft uh, origin. Uh, work uh, AIDS workers in Africa in the 1980s uh, found that their first job was to persuade people that AIDS is not caused by witchcraft, and this was universal throughout uh, throughout uh, Africa. The first thing they had to do was to assure the people that we're not dealing with witchcraft here. Um, but basically what witches and what many conspiracies are alleged to do is to somehow uh, uh, abduct or torment or uh, traffic in children. A focus on children is widespread in conspiracy theorizing all around the world. And of course, it is a fundamental human fear and it is an instinctive fear among all or most uh, uh, animals. Uh, the fear of danger to children, no matter what that danger might be, motivates people and it motivates animals uh, instinctively. It is fundamentally instinctive, even among us, especially among parents, of course, but even among adults who have, ha who have not had children, the idea that children are being endangered uh, motivates people, uh, sometimes blindly. And number nine, witches interfere with sexuality. Uh, uh, our sexuality is fundamental. It is central to our culture. It is on our minds frequently, if not constantly. Uh, and uh, it features strongly in many conspiracy theories. When you combine that with uh, child molestation, you've got a double whammy. And when we might imagine that children are not only in danger, in danger of kidnapping, but they are in danger of sexual molestation, 
uh, we really react uh, strongly. Uh, and the penalties, as you know, for child pornography, possession of, or especially for creation of child pornography are really, really severe. Witches con conduct ritual murder. They are murderers, but they do it in a ritual fashion. Uh, and this idea of ritualizing uh, uh, actions, especially illicit actions, is also universal. And people dread the idea that they their body parts might be might be cut up and distributed, uh, that they might be the victims of cannibalism or vampirism. The ritual use of blood and body parts, fears of of being eaten by other people, uh, or having our blood drunk by other people. These are absolutely universal fears. They are found in in the folklore of all cultures uh, in the world. Uh, they many cultures in the world don't have witches, but they do have creatures outside uh, who uh, engage in these kinds of things, and they have fundamental fears of cannibalism and vampirism. Um, it, these are popular taboo topics. Um, cannibalism does exist, as we know, but it, it does not exist in anywhere near the um, universality that it is popularly believed to exist. And finally, death. Um, witches uh, uh, kill. Uh, witches are associated with death. Witches meet in a place of death, like a cemetery or an execution ground. And the question, why are there witches, is very often answered by reference to a myth that um, uh, explains uh, the hero uh, fought with the god of death uh, in order to uh, a, a achieve or to attempt to achieve um, uh, immortality. Uh, the myth of, of, of mortality uh, and, uh, and immortality is also a widespread uh, um, ideology throughout the world. All of these elements are uh, are found in various conspiracy theories throughout uh, history. Um, whether they are possible or not, um, the the two elements of supernatural uh, causation numbers three and four are generally missing from modern conspiracy theories, but they are found in some uh, cases, uh, uh, even so. Let me move on. Yeah, I, if you have questions on all of this, um, uh, we'll get to them. Um, among the most bizarre and most dangerous and most of uh, um, um, uh, effective uh, conspiracy theories created by people have been those about Jews. Um, uh, Anti-Semitism has generated an awful lot of terrible thinking about uh, the Jews. Here's a terrible um, representation, the, the Jewish uh, female pig. Uh, and this is engraved on the, on the uh, famous bridge in, in, in Frankfurt, uh, Germany. Uh, the picture at the top shows a, uh, a Christian child who has been kidnapped by uh, Jews for use in a satanic ritual, uh, but first it must be uh, circumcised. Uh, and here is a, a fanciful um, image of which of Jewish uh, witches who are circumcising their uh, Christian child victim before they subject him to the the bloody um, uh, tortures and dismemberment that is to is to follow. And you might know that Jews were accused of of conducting a satanic mass uh, using the uh, the child as the Eucharist, um, and Jews were rounded up and uh, burned. Uh, some of them collectively, as in this uh, uh, in engraving. Uh, Anti-Semitism developed into one of the most widespread. Uh, um, most dangerous 
uh, conspiracy theories, I suggest, in all of history, uh, called the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, or the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. You can look it up. There are several books about it. Um, uh, this seemed to be uh, created in Russia toward the end of the 19th century. Uh, it is a story uh, allegedly about the Jewish plot to control the world um, that came out of a meeting of, of Zionists uh, in Basel, uh, Switzerland, sometime in the late 19th century. This is the alleged to have been the minutes, the stolen minutes of that, of that meeting. Uh, examination shows that it is a retelling of uh, a story that had already been published by the, um, uh, a political satire by Maurice Joly uh, in the uh, uh, Napoleonic times. Uh, the title in English was The Dialogue in Hell between Machiavelli and Montesquieu. Uh, um, the uh, uh, text of the protocols directly mirrors uh, this, but of course, most people didn't know that. It's, it was first, apparently first published in Russia in 1903 uh, and uh, tra translated and widely uh, disseminated. In 1920, the London Times, 1921, the London Times exposed it as a hoax, as a fraud, uh, and uh, in a big, long uh, article, which have won some awards for for the for the Times of London, uh, it showed how the uh, the protocols uh, had developed and how it was spreading. But that that exposure uh, apparently had been forgotten. The Frankfurter Zeitung, a German uh, important newspaper covered the same story in 1924, but it remained and it spread and it uh, uh, appeared through many uh, different uh, forms. It seems to have influenced uh, uh, Hitler um, in his book, Mein Kampf, uh, or My Struggle in uh, English. He refers not directly to it, but to ancient uh, sources uh, of 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 Jewish uh, plotting against uh, orderly civilization, and the protocols are published over and over again in many different language languages. Here is a Swedish edition of 1924, uh, a German uh, edition from 1925. Um, the Jewish idea of the Messiah is the translation uh, uh, here. Uh, a French edition of 1934, the, um, showing the uh, the Jew with the with the typical uh, um, uh, nose given to uh, Jews uh, uh, grasping the entire world. The Jewish spider uh, again encircling the world found in another French edition of 1934, uh, and a Brazilian uh, edition from Sao Paulo in 1937. This is the uh, latest one I have, uh, as recent as 1963, um, the year of my graduation from, from college, a, a uh, Spanish edition published in Madrid. The story just would not die, and it appeared in 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 uh, uh, more recent times uh, as well. And it has a life of its own. Um, we have to, at this point, um, uh, distinguish uh, uh, the idea that of, of conspiracy conspiratorial organizations from cults during the great cult scare of the Americas and the rest of the world from the 1970s through the 80s and 90s, um, uh, conspiracy and uh, many of the elements of conspiracy were evident. Uh, social subversion and danger to children were prominent. Um, uh, one of the best books, if you heard my lecture on cults a few weeks ago, 
you have seen some of this uh, and I will go over it fairly quickly. Uh, I praise this book, 1981, The Great American Cult Scare, that takes the organizations led by these people. Um, um, uh, this is uh, 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 Shiva. This is um, uh, Jesus, of course. Um, um, leaders, or cult leaders. I, I'm not going to go into uh, into them. The the Moonies and the People's Temples and the International Society for Christia, Krishna Consciousness, ISKCON, uh, developed by the Swami Prabhuvada, I, I can't say his name uh, correctly, and Jim Jones, uh, Sung Myung Moon. Um, they were regarded with fear and trepidation and the generation of all kinds of, of uh, allegations by parents and other uh, uh, adults. Uh, also in the 1970s, uh, Wicca and uh, modern paganism developed. Um, the most common uh, form of it developed by this man, um, Gerald Gardner in, uh, in England in 1935, 37. Um, Wiccans were nature worshipers. They did not believe in Satan, but they called themselves witches and they called their, their beliefs witchcraft. And that uh, excited uh, 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 people. Uh, Alex Sanders, who was an American, uh, founded a branch and he called it Alexandrian, coming from his own name. This is Alex Sanders uh, and pictures of of Wiccan uh, rituals uh, were in the news. These pictures come from Margot Adler's classic book called Mar uh, Drawing Down the Moon, which is a study of the rise of pagan movements in the 1970s. Uh, and some witches uh, um, added to their popular uh, um, reputation by dancing naked in what they call sky clad, the idea that clothes inhibit the flow of energy between the person and nature. And of course, this led to further um, repugnance on the part of, of the uh, unwitting public. Um, and in 1980, the, the uh, um, idea of witchcraft already generated by Wicca turned to Satanism. Uh, and this led to uh, a, a decade and a half, 15 years of terrible conspiracy theories about uh, hidden satanic cults uh, that are operating just outside of the culture, just outside of the town or the city. Members of the cults are prominent members of society, the police chief, the school principal and a lot of teachers, of course, teachers, because they deal with with kids, daycare workers uh, and uh, police and fire uh, chiefs as well. And a lot of clergy were members of the cult. They met outside the community in a periodic um, uh, uh, schedule, uh, plotting how to overthrow society and uh, to uh, bring in a satanic kind of rule. The idea of what that would be all about varied uh, tremendously. Uh, the first version of Satanism was introduced by Anton LaVey, this fellow. Uh, he said, we don't believe in Satan. We don't believe in the biblical, the Judeo-Christian uh, Islamic idea of shaitan. No, no, no. Come, uh, we are simply anti uh, uh, established religion. We regard religion as as uh, um, hypocritical. Uh, they tell you one thing, but they do something else. Come and join us and be honest. Uh, we enjoy the pleasures of the flesh. We enjoy giving ourselves pleasure and we admit it. We freely admit it. We do no wrong. We do no criminal uh, activities. Come and join us and be honest. Uh, and he chose uh, Satanism, uh, the Church of Satan, as he called his organization, simply because it was opposite to uh, Christianity. 
Uh, and this old L, uh, emblem of the so-called Baphomet or the Sabbatic goat created in the middle of the 19th century in France uh, uh, was, uh, was, elevate, was resurrected by uh, the Satan hunters of the 20th century and it became a horrible uh, symbol of the satanic threat against uh, America. Uh, Satanists were alleged to have this icon on their clothing or tattooed on their bodies, uh, so-called Siegel of Baphomet, um, inspired uh, by the uh, of, of, of widespread um, uh, occultism that spread across Europe and England and uh, America in the late 19th century and the earliest, the early 20th uh, century. Uh, motivated by such people as Aleister Crowley uh, and um, uh, LaVey uh, uh, used it and made an emblem out of it and uh, uh, hung it from his necklace. Charles Manson was regarded as being influenced by Satan and his group of, of, uh, of, of sycophants and uh, the, the uh, terrible uh, young women who followed him. Uh, were regarded as Satanists. And throughout the 1970s, there were fears of missing children. Uh, and this story in the 1980s developed that they were victims of satanic cults. In fact, there were no more missing children in the 70s than in any other period of, of history. Um, but their, their, their uh, frequent appearance on milk cartons, you might remember, uh, stirred up that widespread fear. And this is the book that started it all. Uh, I, at the beginning of my talk, I said we, we, we should avoid monocausal explanations. But in this case, the publication of this book was itself a major trigger of the satanic cult scares of the 1980s and 1990s. Michelle remembers published in 1980, and in that very year, the cult scares began and they spread and they, they consumed communities across our, our country and a lot of lives were, were damaged uh, by allegations which went to court, allegations of tormenting, uh, kidnapping and tormenting of children, daycare workers, uh, and it led to that terrible, um, Manhattan Beach case in, in, uh, in the McMartin Preschool uh, in California. Geraldo Rivera, you might remember, ha had his own talk show. Uh, and in October 1988, I, I don't remember the exact date, but it was uh, that was the, the month and the year. Uh, on his talk show, uh, he uh, displayed a number of women who said that they had been enslaved by a satanic cult or by different satanic cults and made to produce children. They were impregnated by members of the cult and to produce children uh, in secret so that the child's births were, the children's births were not recorded um, and so that they could have a ready uh, sacrifice without uh, alarming uh, the authorities. This was part of the later uh, satanic cult uh, uh, conspiracy theories um, that that thousands of children were being killed by satanic cults. Uh, and why were why were there not the reports? This was one explanation for it. And Geraldo Rivera demanded, and he repeated this several times during that during that talk show, a full-scale congressional investigation into satanic cult activity. Taking our traits of the witch, we can apply them to the alleged uh, Satanists. Um, uh, these three uh, here that I have separated, numbers three, four, and five, are uncommon. All the rest of them are common in the in, uh, uh, allegations of uh, of many conspiracy theories, including QAnon. If you've heard any of the varieties of the QAnon allegations, you will recognize that many of them are 
are are uh, are there. You might remember allegations about the Salvadoran gang called MS-13. MS-13 really did exist, and there's an anthropological book about it by a, a guy named Ward, W-A-R-D. Um, but the, the satanic elements in it are largely fabricated. Um, the idea that they were motivated by satanic uh, desires seems to be false, and their widespread activities are the result of a rumor panic. They were nowhere near as widespread uh, and as as satanically vicious as the uh, rumors um, said they were. You remember uh, the Trump administration uh, launched uh, widespread fears about about Q and uh, about uh, MS-13, claiming that they were coming up through the um, uh, southwestern uh, borders into America, and so on and so on. One of the best books on the whole business of Satanism is by Jeffrey Victor, now retired from Jamestown Community College. Um, and, uh, and for him, it started with a rumor panic in the city of Jamestown, Friday, the 13th of May, 1988. The cult was going to kidnap a blonde, blue-eyed virgin uh, a child uh, and sacrifice it. On that day, and this is true, uh, and I was consulted by the press about this, uh, police leaves were canceled, schools were closed, there was a run on gun shops, there was a full-fledged rumor panic in Jamestown about the activities of an alleged satanic uh, cult. Jeffrey Victor mapped such rumor panics that existed around the country. This is an early version of a map that appears in his book. Uh, the map actually it was expanded, and there was not a single state in the Union that did not have some fears of Satanism. Uh, a Christian publishing house in in Chico, uh, uh, Chico, Cal is it Chico, uh, Chino, California, called Chick Chick Publications. They're still operating. Um, they published a little pamphlet called The Poor Little Witch uh, about a young woman um, who is drafted into the into the cult by her by her teacher. Uh, and uh, she escapes from from the cult, but she is kidnapped by the cultists uh, and and executed. Um, it's a it's all the elements of the popular satanic myth are there. Um, the the pictures show such a, a ritual. The Satanists are dressed in black. The cross is upside down, um, uh, uh, and the 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 priest, the chief priest, is welcoming his his guests. Just the uh, one of the women enslaved by the cult has produced a child for us. The child is killed. The blood of the child is poured into a goblet. Uh, Mandy, our, our, our heroine is named Mandy. Her teacher, who's a member of the cult, says to Mandy, you must drink the child's blood. Uh, Mandy says, no, I'm not feeling well, no. But finally she does. But Mandy is stronger than the cultists realize. She escapes. She flees to a fundamentalist preacher, Christian preacher, who drives out the demons that are afflicting her and she is exercised by the power of Jesus um, and, oh, sorry, uh, and uh, uh, they uh, try to persuade her to, to uh, uh, stay the night because it's the full moon, but she says, no, she'll be okay. And indeed she is, uh, she is uh, uh, caught by the cult. Uh, we're running out of time. I'm go just going to um, give you this list of of uh, of conspiracy theories uh, that I have put put together that have been really uh, influential. They have, uh, in many cases, they have uh, hurt people, uh, damaged reputations, uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, the Bohemian Grove. Uh, uh, was a men's retreat place. You can look it up. They too 
adopted some of these, uh, I'm sorry, stories about them because they are secret, uh, uh, developed, uh, adopted some of the elements of, of the satanic, the witchcraft uh, demonology, uh, including uh, the sacrifice of, of children and, and, and so on. Area 51, uh, a popular um, conspiracy, conspiratorial uh, theme in American history is um, the uh, capture and, and uh, uh, hiding of alien visitors from other worlds, right? Uh, and QAnon, um, most of the followers of QAnon are those or the expectant uh, those expectant of some uh, revelation from QAnon do not agree on what it's all about. It's very hard to study QAnon. Uh, and remember this one? Um, some pranksters, I don't know if it's ever been revealed, who deposited these silver uh, steel monoliths. And uh, this one is in the Utah desert last, uh, last uh, November. And another one somewhere in New England, very similar. Uh, and of course, they evoke the uh, the uh, movie uh, a Space Odyssey, two thousand one, a Space Odyssey. Um, we are enchanted by the idea. Um, I'm going to have to uh, uh, quit. I, uh, I am I am asked by um, people frequently. So what do we do about it? Uh, um, if it is indeed as dangerous as I suggest, uh, it indicates a crisis in thinking, which can indeed be dangerous, uh, as we see proponents of what is called the big lie today uh, are, are, are at least as numerous as they used to be. Some, some, there are some suggestions that their numbers are dwindling. Um, while it's very easy to scare people, it's very hard to unscare them. These things become really tenacious uh, and uh, they uh, uh, take on lives of their own. Uh, and if uh, try, attempts to deny them, attempts to disprove them, uh, often receive allegations that one is in cahoots with them. That's what happened in McCarthyism. Um, people who who attempted to deny that there really is an active communist plot against America directed at our youth were accused themselves of being part of that plot. Uh, it's really is a serious uh, issue. Um, broad systemic education is required. Uh, cultural education, it must begin early. Um, I'm going to uh, I'll stop here. At the very beginning of my first slide, I gave you my uh, phone number and my uh, email address if if you would like to uh, to uh, follow up. Uh, here it is again, uh, uh, and I'm going to uh, stop there. I'm sorry, Katie, I've gone a little bit longer than I had planned. Uh, I hope we still have time for some questions. We absolutely do, Phil, and thank you for that presentation. No apologies necessary. That's a lot of material to cover. Okay, so um, the first thing we'll start with here is, what are your thoughts on a person's intelligence as it relates to their vulnerability to believing conspiracy theory? It appears stupid to believe some of these things, but I know of otherwise seemingly intelligent people involved. That's a tricky question. Um, stupidity and intelligence are touchy words, you know. Um, I regard intelligence as the capacity to learn. Uh, and it is true that an awful lot of intelligent people with respectable college degrees are proponents of some of these theories. Uh, and I suggest that we, in order to understand why, we've got to look into what else is going on in their own lives and in their own social groups. Uh, um, 
it's not helpful to label them as stupid. Uh, it's not helpful to even bring in uh, the uh, concept of intelligence. It really does muddy the waters. It, it gets people upset. And it, of course, it tends to uh, get them to deep more deeply uh, entrenched. Um, I think it's rather more helpful to to look at the belief and say, okay, let's consider this. What are the alternative explanations? What else might explain these kinds of things? Uh, and um, um, as I said in my very last uh, slide, which I passed over uh, 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 quickly, um, how do you evaluate such claims? Uh, and uh, that is a good lesson uh, for teachers or uh, educators at all levels. Uh, on the one hand, as I suggested at the very beginning, in order for this to be true, what would have to be happening? In order for the big lie to actually be true, what would it take? Um, Remember, this was a national election, right? Uh, and when you start thinking that way, you begin to realize, I think, that this is less and less likely. In order for the moon landing to have been staged, what would have had to have been done? And um, this is now 50, more than 50 years ago, isn't it? Um, uh, and it's uh, the, the idea of the hoax is still there. Um, to, to answer such questions, we should start with the simplest explanation. That's the so-called principle of, of economy or parsimony or Occam's razor. The, the simplest explanation is the one that generates the, the fewest possible additional questions. Um, um, like uh, the belief uh, in Noah's Ark the belief in the great biblical flood uh, and the uh, um, de destruction of humanity and the, and the, re re be the new beginning of humanity thanks to Noah and his, uh, his ark. And a lot of people have looked for evidence of the ark and looked for evidence of the flood. Um, uh, and this is involved, it, you can't get away from supernatural explanations in uh, in this. Um, the simplest explanation is looking at international mythology. We find flood theories and similar theories uh, all over, well, not all over the world, but in many, many other cultures. And we begin to realize that people are thinking in similar ways. We draw from anthropology. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm rambling, but um, I, I think a systemic response to examine the belief and examine all possible explanations for it um, is, is helpful. I know I've taken more time than you wanted. Let's go to another question if you have any. We do, and thank you, Phil. Uh, well, this is a comment. It says, wow, I had no idea about all of these theories. This next is uh, I, I let me interrupt and, and remind people uh, I can copy any of my slides uh, separately and send them to you. I had a list of modern conspiracy theories that uh, I, I went over very quickly because I was I was looking at my clock, uh, but I can send you that list if uh, anybody would like it. Go ahead, Katie. Thanks, Phil. This next thing is I notice you have not included assassination conspiracy theories in your lecture, wondering why. Oh my, because I have to end somewhere and my my imagination and my mind are, are limited. You're absolutely right. The, the assassination of JFK, for example, generated all kinds of, of thinking. Oliver Stone uh, uh, created some new ones, didn't he, in, in his... Uh, in his film, uh, yeah, um, and uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln and other other great assassinations were involved in in one. Now I don't know how it's taking shape, but it certainly will. 
with the assassination of the president of Haiti just a few a few days ago. Confusion uh, generates such uh, uh, thinking. People put together all kinds of explanations because people need explanations. It's as simple as that. Go ahead. Thanks. That's a really powerful statement, Phil, actually. Um, so this next thing is a comment. There's always been insular thinking, but I think social media has made it way worse. Possibly. Um, and of course, I tell my grandchildren, two of which two of which are, are going into journalism as a career, I praise that. I tell them that one of the most important and least appreciated disciplines in the world today is journalism. And journalists are are struggling with this very uh, uh, issue. How do you report? How do you filter? How do you get personal sentiment out of your reporting? And what are, are there any possibilities of control? A, a story coming out of Fox News is going to be very different from a story come, the very same story coming out of CNN. Uh, and this is a, a real problem. I urge people to look at different sources for one thing. Um, the New York Times is vilified, but I still believe that the New York Times is probably the leading paper in the world. Now you can argue the Los Angeles Times, the Washington Post, the London Times are all contenders, uh, but we need to look at responsible journalism as well as um, other forms of of reporting. It really is a a, a problem. Thanks, Phil. We have a comment that says, "Amen to that, Phil." Journalism. <laughs> Uh, there's a question about critical thinking. I think we've touched on that. And uh, this is a question. Why have the Jews been the focus for so long? Oh, boy, that's another. Uh, it is argued that anti-Semitism developed before Christianity. Um, uh, of course, the Jews before Christ were uh, under Roman control for 200 years before Jesus appeared on the scene and uh, uh, Jews were rebelling uh, against the Romans and there were indeed Roman uh, 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 legends, Roman stories about the Jews. Some of the ancient elements of child abduction uh, and, and cannibalism and, and vampirism uh, were in such stories. So it's argued uh, that anti-Semitism developed before Christianity. I don't think that argument is very uh, uh, helpful. Uh, rather, Christianity, I'm sorry, I was raised Christian and I'm uh, an, ad, an uh, ordained elder in a large Christian church today, um, but um, Christianity gave real life and body to uh, anti-Semitism. Uh, and look at the Gospel of John. Um, and this this gospel blames the Jews. John talks about the Jews who are already now uh, the adversaries, the Christ killers. They are the ones who denied Jesus a fair trial. They are the ones who crucified him, uh, who sold out to Judas, the Jews. Uh, and from there on, the Jews became the favorite scapegoat uh, of Christians and uh, scapegoating uh, spread uh, and uh, anti-Semitism spread. And we know uh, what happened in the Holocaust under the Third Reich. Um, anti-Semitism is probably historically the, the worst of, of, of all uh, uh, results of conspiracy theories in, in, human, in human thinking. It's there, it's the subject of, of many uh, books. The question is an important one. I can't really do justice to it uh, in, in the time we have here. But that's where it goes. That's in the first uh, end of the first and uh, 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 into the second and third centuries of the modern era, uh, Christianity fanned the flames of and developed the essence of uh, anti-Semitism and it spread 
and it became um, dominant in times of social stress uh, uh, thereafter. It's it's uh, it's it's awful, just awful. It sure is, and thank you for talking with us about that, Phil, and giving all that background. That's really helpful. Uh, the last things I'm seeing here are just a bunch of thank yous, so I'll just pull out a few. Thanks for another fantastic presentation, as always. Appreciate you giving me all of these things to think about. I had no idea all of these existed. It goes on. So, Phil, thank you thank very you. much. It's been a pleasure, and it's always a pleasure working with, with uh, Katie. Listen to me. Oh, I'm breaking up. This is the last one on Zoom, isn't it? Uh, For you, yeah. And we've done it since uh, uh, at least uh, what, 14 months now or, or, or so. Intermittently, yep. It's and, been uh, yep. wild. For, for those of you who are local, I'll, I'll be back in person to various uh, senior centers around Erie County with a variety of Halloween-focused uh, talks on witches and vampires and werewolves and other dangerous creatures of the night. Hope to see some of you there. How many people are present, Katie? Uh, we have, it looks to be about 30 right now, Phil. Okay, good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you all for your patience. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much.